world-class professional wrestling entertainment. attention that the board of directors have permanently banned Skandar Akbar from wrestling action right here in the World Wrestling Empire. They said if they needed a bunch of bad guys interfering in matches, they'd get Devlin Blanchard back here. We want athletics and sports here and not a bunch of backstabbing going on. Other than that, we got great action tonight. You're going to see Leopard Man as he takes on Ian St. James. And then one half of the Masters of Destruction is going to challenge Crazy Carl when chaos comes to the ring. Also, somebody we haven't seen in a while, Raging Cajun will be back to take on Red Eagle tonight. And uh, later on, we got Shane Cortez and a new tag team to the World Wrestling Empire Hot Property. A lot of other action right here tonight. Looking forward to a great one. Sounds like a good one there, Ledge. I can't wait to get started. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's not wait any longer. Let's get a commercial in, and we're going to be right back with a lot of wild things right here in the World Wrestling Empire. Break one nine for a lonely trucker. Can anyone copy? How about Guys, where do you go when you just got to get on that channel? Try Radio City CB. Radio City has new grant, unit and Galaxy and Cobra radios, fire stick and hustler antennas, and they're an authorized Wilson dealer. Mama got you on a budget? Radio City has a large selection of pre-owned radios for anyone's pocketbook. Whether it's installation, service, or just the rock bottom prices, the next time you just got to get through, think Radio City CB. In the northwest corner of the parking lot, Bruce's Hello? Truck Stop, 161st and Skelly Drive. Conley's is expanding. No, not Jimmy, the showroom. To make more room for all your appliance needs. We've expanded our lines of new furniture with Washington Dykes and Seville. And as always, we have a full line of quality pre-owned appliances. So whether you need a refrigerator, stove, washer, dryer, TV, or VCR, come to Conley Appliances and either purchase or rent to own. And don't forget our service after the sale. Come by Conley's on the corner of 49th West Avenue and Charles Page Boulevard and see our expanded showroom. And remember... Vern Jewelry is still next door. Come do the Tomahawk Chop with us. The first event of 1996 has been changed to Saturday, January 13th. It's Indian versus Indian as heavyweight champion Red Eagle puts his belt on the line against the original Renegade. There may be blood, but that won't make them blood brothers as Red Eagle is tired of being jumped from behind by Renegade. Don't miss it. That's Saturday, January 13th, the National Guard Armory, 4200 North Bingo Valley Expressway. Doors open at 7 o'clock, bell time at 8 o'clock. World Wrestling Empire, be there. We'd like to get to know you. Yes, we would. Call 274-9930 and answer a few questions, and we'll send you free passes to a future WWE live event. That's 274-9930. Operators are standing by. Ledge here with Flamin' Raymond and uh, Bernard Funk, uh, barely here by the skin of their teeth. Barely here by the skin of our teeth. We're here in the WWE where the competition's hot. And it always will be with us, myself, Bernard, and renegade here in the WWE. Oh, so your, your, your tactics haven't changed in light of what's happened. What's happened? We are here in the WWE. That's all there needs to be said about it. 
you, everybody out there watching in TV land, think of this one time. Flamin' Raymond has everything under control. That's all you have to worry about. Flamin' Raymond is the number one man in the WWE. We will have the light heavyweight, or TV title as they call it nowadays. We will have the heavyweight, and we're going to have the tag team belts from them in-law, outlaw boys, or whatever you want to call them. Yep. I'm the ledge with the Clueless in Tulsa, and this is the World Wrestling Empire. All right, welcome back to the World Wrestling Empire. You know, Raymond and gang barely hung on to staying in the empire by the skin of their teeth. Their association with Skandar Akbar just about cost them their livelihood. <laughs> Boy, what a deal. I tell you there, Ledge, they should have took Raymond and his group out right with old Skandar, I guarantee you, because they belong together. Uh, we don't need people like them here in the WWE, and that's a fact. That's correct. Well, I'll tell you, we got a great match coming up next when we're going to see Leopard Man taking on to Ian St. James. For the introductions, let's go to our lovely new ring announcer. Coming in first, standing six feet tall, weighing 240 pounds, from parts unknown, Leopard Man. <laughs> Leopard Man uh, returns to the World Wrestling Empire minus his tag team partner tonight for a little bit of singles action. I uh, wonder how he'll fare without assistance outside of the ring. I'll tell you what, Ledge, I've had dealings with this here Leopard Man and he's a slippery character. I guarantee you. All right, well, let's go to Christy in the ring. His opponent, standing six feet tall, weighing 205 pounds, from Washington, D.C., Ian St. James. All right, Ian St. James from Washington, D.C., one of the new up-and-coming members of the World Wrestling Empire. A new talent, I heard the Leopard Man run out something about fresh meat. <laughs> well, I tell you, Leopard Man knows that St. James is young. He's uh, not well-trained, a little green, but I think he's got what it takes to take on this Leopard Man because, hey, what is a leopard anyway? A dumb animal. All right, third man in the ring tonight for his uh, referee, Alan Lane, taking care of all the action. And there's the bell. All right, collar and elbow tie up. Leopard man going to work early with the wrist lock against Ian St. James. Torquing it down hard right there. Ah, oh, Leopard Man goes into the hammer lock. Oh, goes in for an early cover. Referee Alan Lane right there on top of the action. It's Leopard Man bringing a lot more experience to the squared circle. Well, I guarantee you, St. James ain't no dummy. He knows, he knows some and he knows a little bit. I'm sure he'll be able to take it to him. Oh, big move by Leopard Man. Ian St. James down on the mat. Leopard Man goes in. Referee Allen Lane right there counting the, looks like he's counting for a choke hold. Leopard Man right back in on top of him. Warning by referee Allen Lane. Leopard Man continues to work on Ian St. James. St. James attempts to back out of there crawling, if you will. Good tactic, a little weak, you know, but a good tactic. Now get him off the ropes there, ref. What's wrong Leopard with Man you? puts his feet into the ropes. Referee Allen Lane doesn't see. Oh, catches him right there. A warning received by Leopard Man. He's ordered the hold broken. Leopard Man breaks the hold, and St. James backs out to his feet again. Okay, that shows you the rookie part of the St. James right there. He should have went ahead and aggressed towards his man. There you go. There's a good chop to the chest as he mm -hmm. backs up. What's he going to do now? He comes in, he catches a boot right there in the stomach. That had to hurt their ledge. Leopard Man comes out of the corner kicking, goes back in, sets up a headlock, or uh, looks like these guys are going to, I don't know, it may turn into a brawl at some point. Right now, referee Allen Lane's got him tied up the quarter, orders the hold broken, and uh, physically backs Leopard Man out, warns the wrestler. I tell you, that Leopard Man, you really got to watch him. If, you, if you're the referee, if you're the other wrestler, I guarantee you, he'll jump on you just like he will the wrestler. 
All right. Oh, Leopard Man dives out. Got to wonder about what's going on in Leopard Man's head right now as he dives out underneath the bottom rope. Uh, I know he can't be trying to get away from St. James. Leopard Man scoots back in underneath the bottom rope. Ian St. James circles the ring around behind Leopard Man. Leopard Man has a complaint of some sort to register with Alan Lane. Smiling Alan Lane, of course a great wrestler in the World Wrestling Empire several years ago, returns as a, uh, to the officiating duties inside the ring. St. James go. reaches in, goes in for a roll up. Kick out on about two and a half. Ho! Oh, Leopard Man scoots into the corner post and St. James tags him. Uh, I wonder if he changed an octave in his voice there, Ledge. Ian St. James sets up Leopard Man. There's a suplex. Nice move. Goes in for a cover. Kick out on two by Leopard Man. Chop to the chest, whip out of the turnbuckles, oh! oh vicious elbow, that had to hurt, that Man. had to hurt. Ian St. James backed into that corner, nowhere to go, but to take the full blow of that elbow. Okay, St. James, there you go. Get up there while he's showing off. Get on him, get on him, go ahead. There you oh, go, good move. Chop to the right back, the hands him, sets him up, rolls him, two. No, nope. works one, two. Kick out on two by Leopard Man. Another kick out on two. Ian St. James showing a lot of enthusiasm here. I've never seen Leopard Man on his back so many times in so many seconds. Leopard Man having to squirm right and left to get away from this youngster. Oh, three times right in the throat. Come on, referee. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? This poor kid's going to be spitting blood. For oh. Ian St. James tries to fight his way back, but Leopard Man has something to say about that. Nice kick and a beautiful Ian St. James. Spot yeah. kick. Beautiful spot kick by the Leopard Man. I tell you, he's got to be hurting right now. Got to be hurting. Caught that one right in the ribs after three or four chops to the throat. What next? Oh, headbutt. Ooh, guess that answered my question right there. Yeah, Mercy I just can't help but feel sometimes that maybe Leopard Man doesn't wear that mess mask to uh, keep something in there so he can pull off those headbutts. This man seems totally unaffected by it. Well, I guarantee you, he sent me to Disneyland once or twice with that headbutt, and uh, I wouldn't doubt it all. <laughs> Disneyland, like a free vacation. Huh? <laughs> I guarantee you, stars and all. <laughs> Leopard Man's on the top rope. Go. I believe this is going to be it. In St. James, it's out. It. I don't One, think he can do it. two, there you have it. Leopard Man defeats Ian St. James. Covers him, gets the three count. Uh, that headbutt really took a took a blow. Not quite as graceful as the Leopard did there, is he? Not quite. Looks like he's <laughs> a little clumsy on oh, that. Oh, and now we oh, got t tap Tim Zane trying to protect Ian St. James. There we go. Now Leopard Man got what coming to him, I guarantee it. Kind of fell off those ropes there, didn't he? A little slow leaving ringside. Ian St. James definitely injured after that battle right there. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, we got a uh, lot more action coming at you. We got Chaos taking on Crazy Carl next right here in the World Wrestling Empire. We're going to get a word in from our sponsors, let these guys clear out of the ring, and we're going to be right back. Stay out of the refrigerator. It'll make you fat. Need <laughs> insurance if you have a car, boat, or motorcycle, even if you have traffic tickets or a DUI. If you own a business, if you are a renter, try us for insurance. It's been serving Oklahomans since 1951. We are property and casualty insurance specialists. Try us for insurance. An independent agent for property and casualty insurance. Try us for insurance. 831 North Sheridan, Tulsa. That's 834-5663. Hey, all you viewers have never attended a WWE live event. What are you waiting for? Come on out to our next event, January 13th, 1996, at the National Guard Armory, 4200 North Mingo Valley Expressway. We have lighted parking, clean premises, family orientation, no alcoholic beverages or smoking allowed. Lots of good, clean fun for a nominal price. Where else can you kids go and spend an entire evening for only two bucks? And senior citizens are two bucks also. Regular tickets, only five bucks. So come out January 13th and see Red Eagle defend his title against the original Renegade. You'll have a good time. Honest. Research has shown that the most successful advertising campaigns combine print and broadcast media for a two-pronged approach. 
Broadcast generates the enthusiasm and desire and implants your business name in the mind of the consumer. Print media then works to give specifics and to get people in your door. If you've ever priced TV advertising, you know it can be expensive. Well, not anymore. Davcom Video and the WWE are looking for a few good sponsors. We own the airtime and can produce your spot ourselves so we can offer you an unheard of deal in TV advertising. And we'll work with your budget and cash flow, arranging payment schedules due monthly or even weekly if that works best for you. Interested? Call now and ask for our marketing director, Brenda Shanahan, for complete details. 918-749-9447. Promotional consideration provided by the following. Dabcom Video. Don't let your business be the best kept secret in town. Call Dabcom Video. Skyam Graphics. Proudly providing the World Wrestling Empire event program. Sir Knight Formal Wear. When you want to look right, Sir Knight. Try us for insurance. For your home, car, or business. All right, welcome back to the World Wrestling Empire where we got a lot more wild and crazy things coming at you tonight. Speaking of wild and crazy, we got one of my favorite hillbillies coming up in this next match. And he's going to be taking on uh, one half of the Masters of Destruction. Looking forward to that. How about you? Well, I'll tell you, this, huh? hill, this hillbilly right here, he is a crazy <laughs> son of a gun. I dealt with him on the other side of the ring from him. I promise you, Crazy Carl is 122% crazy. All right. Well, let's not waste any more time. Let's go to Christy in the ring. And now, coming in first, he is 5 feet, 11 inches tall, weighs in at 230 pounds, Chaos. Chaos, who won half of the Masters of Destruction. Likes to get out there and tangle it up by himself every now and then. I'll tell you what, Ledge, I don't think he's going to be able to do a bit of good without his partner. Because if there isn't two of them to cheat, one of them definitely can't do it. That's right. Well, let's go on back to uh, Christy in the ring. His opponent, standing five feet, eight inches tall, weighs in at 280 pounds from Millshoe, Texas, Crazy Carl. All right, Crazy Carl, one half oh, of the hillbillies from Yulsey, Texas. Yeah, he must have stole that or something. Wanders around with a little, uh, still carrying on the Christmas spirit there. Crazy <laughs> Carl looks like running out of silly string all at the same time. That uh, Crazy Carl. Oh, new can. Look at him. There he goes. <laughs> uh, uh, always keep a spare. <laughs> Crazy Carl, one of the favorites here in the World Wrestling Empire tonight. <laughs> oh, the, definitely a nut, Ledge. Yeah, definitely, definitely a nut. <laughs> well, it takes a different kind of person to get into that ring, as you will well attest, and uh, that's different, all right. You know, I haven't seen him do his classic goose yet. I wonder when he's going to do I this. I don't know. We'll be seeing that pretty soon. <laughs> Crazy Carl trying to get a head scratched or something. Uh, must have fleas from the manure pit. Oh! There's the bell. Chaos moves in early and goes to work on Crazy Carl working that uh, wrist lock. Sets him into the turnbuckles. Oh! Grabbing a lot of meat right there, sure enough. Just put his oh, oh, Crazy Carl reverses the whip, falls. Oh! Good clothesline. Crazy oh, Carl chaos goes with hard. The, oh, ouch. One, two, it. Nope. gets the shoulder up on two. Crazy Carl goes for the early cover. Oh! Now there's a, now I can understand why that headbutt works. Well, I guarantee <laughs> you, that's another hard you head know? here in the WWE. For that to hurt would require, you know, brains in the cranial area up there, and uh, <laughs> I, I, that's just not one of Carl's strong points, I don't think. Yeah, I think he's a little short of turnips in that bushel, that's for sure. <laughs> Oh, these guys decide to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and slug it out tonight. There's a whip off the rope. No, flying clothesline. Heard that all the way from here. That son of a gun made some good Ouch. contact. Drives Crazy Carl into the mat. There, sets him into the ropes once again. Oh, misses with the clothesline. Oh, good move by Crazy Carl. All right. I tell you, Chaos better do something and do it quick. 
who knows? Who knows what's going through the brain of Crazy Carl right yeah. now? Yeah, well, you, you, I will say it again. You know, he, the guy would have to have a brain. <laughs> I think he just said on it, Ledge. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, crazy Carl doing a little look like disco dancing for the camera tonight. Receives a little bit of a warning by uh, referee Alan Laner. I guess it was a clarification of the rules. <laughs> Carl thought he'd pinned him that time. One, two, oh, and Chaos gets his shoulder up on the two count. Crazy Carl uh, pretty much having his way with one half of the Masters of Destruction at this point. Try to take his mask off there, Ledge. take that hood off of him. Crazy. I'd like to see who that is. I'm kind of curious myself. Now, these guys wear these masks into the building. Now, you never know what's going on. It must look pretty funny driving down the road. You don't suppose it's raining underneath that mask, do you? <laughs> After this Red Rider thing we had a while back, I couldn't tell you. There is, you know. I guarantee you, it wouldn't surprise me one bit to pull Raymond right out from underneath that mask. <laughs> oh, man. I've seen some wild things go on here in the Empire, but this Red Rider Flaming Raymond thing was definitely just too much. Crazy Carl says he's not doing nothing. Uh oh, I thought we almost seen that uh, classic. We almost yeah. seen that classic move. The most dangerous weapon in the hillbilly arsenal. I guarantee you. The goose. Crazy Carl sets chaos into the corner. Referee Allen Lane orders the hold broken. Oh, Carl backs turn out. Turn back. Oh! Well, that was to be expected right there. Yeah, but when you got kind of crazy like that, you do stupid things. Uh, you know. Laugh as we do it, Crazy Carl. The guy is really a ring-wise tactician, and uh, everything he does is very well calculated and uh, definitely designed to throw your opponent off guard, break his concentration, just just ruin him. Right oh, now, uh, that he kicks right to the rib cage. He's got to be hurting for air. Don't push him out. Oh, no, there, there, Crazy Carl slides out underneath well, the bottom row. That was Chaos's fault for pushing him out. Now Carl has a chance to sit out there and breathe and catch himself a little bit of air there. There you go. Chaos would be doing good to stay in his corner, let the referee administer that account. But uh, he chooses instead to uh, not obey the rules, gives his opponent a little longer to get in. But uh, looks like it might not have been enough time. Oh, he's still working on the lung area, still working on that lung area. I'm surprised the man's got any air at all. Oh. Uh-oh. Crazy Carl slowly. Guy looks a little disoriented right now. I thought he always was. <laughs> well. Oh, Crazy Carl fights his way back. Going to work on chaos. Woo, right on the top Big of the shots. There we go in the stomach. Setting them up. What do we got? Suplex. Oh. Slam suplex. Boy, did he hit hard. Ouch. I wonder if that finished it right there, Lynch. One, two. And chaos able to get that uh, shoulder up on the two count. See, that's something you never can contemplate with them. You never know when the crazy Carl is hurt or not. He can jump back in just a split second from out of nowhere. Crazy Carl demon uh, um, demonstrating one of the classic requirements for a professional wrestler, and that is that quick recovery time from injury. All right, now we got him, uh, boy, putting a lot of pressure on the uh, neck and the upper back area with that one. A little comment by Crazy Carl, not quite sure what he had to say to the referee. Oh! Oh! Oh, there, gave him that old atomic knee. Oh, oh. good kick, look at there. Carl got that leg kind of up in there, there. Yeah, I was surprised to see a man of his size do that. Uh oh, here Off we go. Oh. oh, big splash. I believe this is it, yeah. Crazy Carl has just defeated one half of the Masters of Destruction with chaos. Boy, that was a killer match. I guarantee. Could you imagine 200 and something pounds of crazy coming right there? Right. Referee Alan Lane declares Crazy Carl the winner of the match. Able to pin chaos. A great move by the hillbilly from Mule Shoe, Texas. Okay. 
We're not even going to take a commercial right here. We're just going to go on to the next match. Sounds like a winner to me. How about you? Sounds great to me. Lee. I love this action. This is great. You know, we got a gentleman who uh, returns to the Empire from time to time from the Shreveport, Louisiana area. Is going to take on the World Wrestling Empire Heavyweight Champion. Now, Eagle just regained his belt. That's true. A couple weeks ago was defeated. Came back in an untelevised match. Won his belt back. And he's here to defend it tonight. Let's go to Christy in the ring. Now approaching the ring, he stands five feet, 10 inches tall, weighs 250 pounds, from Shreveport, Louisiana, Raging Cajun. All right, the Raging Cajun returns to the World Wrestling Empire for a shot at the WWE Heavyweight Champion. For his introduction, let's go to Christy. His opponent, Standing six feet, eight inches tall, weighs in at 310 pounds, the World Wrestling Empire heavyweight champion from Coweta, Oklahoma, Red Eagle. All right, Red Eagle, the World Wrestling Empire heavyweight champion from Coweta, Oklahoma. Boy, he come outside there right there in his native colors, too. That is one beautiful costume. Mm -hmm. right there Looking too. good. The World Wrestling Empire heavyweight champion, Red Eagle. Comes back to the squared circle after uh, regaining his belt. World Wrestling Empire, of course, makes every effort to bring you all the matches, but some events, uh, we just can't tape all of them. <laughs> Referee Alan Lane checks over the wrestlers. And there's the bell. I tell you, Ledge, I look for Red Eagle to go over on this one right there. The man outweighs him. He's about uh, a foot and a half taller. And I swear, the strength of that man is just unbelievable. Unreal. The referee Alan Lane right in the middle of the action there. Raging Cajun ties it up. Oh, nice move by Red Eagle. There's a whip off the ropes. Boom! drives the Raging Cajun into the mat. I bet Raging Cajun is feeling it now. Red Eagle goes to work with the wrist lock. Goes into a, some sort of an arm bar there, I guess. Kind of a modified version. That's probably one of his own special concoctions there. You know, a lot of us wrestlers have our own special moves, our own special lockups. That's the way it makes you different from my, everybody else out there. And right, right now, Red Eagle goes to work on the legs of the Raging Cajun. While not uh, equal in, uh, in height, is definitely a close second only to Red Eagle. A lot of weight on the little man there. Makes for a low center of gravity, which on the mat at this point will do him absolutely no good. That's true. As long as he stays right there in the middle section of his body right there, it's awful hard to get up about. All a man can do is reach. There he goes. Reach up there and grab the rope to break the hole. All right. Raging Cajun shows a little ring smarts there. Able to get Red Eagle off of him. Red Eagle smartly going to work on the leg of legs, I guess we should say. Oh, the Cajun comes back with a kick and a nice smash to the back of Red Eagle. Sets him into the ropes, whips him into the turnbuckle, falls it up. Oh, Red Eagle comes out big with the clothesline. Yeah, that was a double clothesline there, Ledge. They both tried to catch each other, but it looked like Red Eagle had a little bit more savvy on his clothesline mm -hmm. than Raging Cajun did. That's right, and Red Eagle knows he hurt the man with that one. Well aware of it, moves in fast. Sets him up. Snapmare. Red Eagle in behind him. Oh, oh listen to the power of that. I bet that jarred his hind teeth loose. Raging Cajun down, driven to the mat. Gets him up. There's a whip off the rope. Oh. There you go. Double axe handle right there to the chest area. That don't One. knock it out of you. Nothing will. Raging Cajun gets his foot into the ropes. Raging Cajun got a little bit of ring savvy there. Puts his foot in the rope to save from the count because he couldn't have got up three. That's a smart man. All right, Raging Cajun in against the World Wrestling Empire. Heavyweight champion, Red Eagle. Oh, oh look at there. You ever seen Woo. a 300-something pound man do a double drop kick? There it was. Two, three, there you have yeah, All right, that's ladies all that and gentlemen. One, Boy, Raging Cajun is slammed uh, by the World Wrestling Empire what's heavyweight what's, champion. What's, what's Here's Raymond there? out here now. I bet Raymond's he took his got a off. finger up in the air. What Raymond could this possibly one. mean? <laughs> Referee Allen Lane, a little discussion going on. What's Raymond doing? Uh, uh, there's, there's Renegade. Watch him, Renegade. There's Renegade, Red Eagle. Ben Ambu. 
pushed by a renegade, sets him up. Oh, Red Eagle reverses him. Oh, yes. Give him that big move. Goes in at one, two, three. Hey, look at that. That's a double match, double pin. Oh, he yeah. gave the Red Eagle oh. that tremendously large, tremendously large wrestler. You know, that can only indicate that Raymond and Red Eagle have got designs on the WWE heavyweight belt. I guarantee you, I bet old Raymond would have to go home and change his underclothes after that one because I'm sure that was not what he was wanting to happen. Oh, man, well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to sneak back into the, into the back somewhere, and we're going to get an interview with Red Eagle right after this commercial break. I'm the ledge with the bone crusher, Bobby Burns, from the Texas Outlaws, and you're watching the World Wrestling Empire. Hi, I'm Glenn DeWeese, the owner of Davcom Video and the director of tonight's show. And this is the edit suite where we put it all together. You know, it's a proven fact that people who both see and hear information remember significantly more than people who only see or hear it. Recent advances in video technology have brought high quality video within the reach of even the smallest business or organization. If you have a video need for anything from large multi-camera shoots from cheerleading competitions to professional wrestling, or perhaps you want to showcase your product in a trade show or create a training video for your employees, Davcom Video offers turnkey production from scripting to making your copies. And we'll work with your budget to give you the best video product your money can buy. Call us now, 749-9447. References available on request. Come do the Tomahawk Chop with us. The first event of 1996 has been changed to Saturday, January 13th. It's Indian versus Indian as heavyweight champion Red Eagle puts his belt on the line against the original Renegade. There may be blood, but that won't make them blood brothers as Red Eagle is tired of being jumped from behind by a Renegade. Don't miss it. That's Saturday, January 13th, the National Guard Armory, 4200 North Bingo Valley Expressway. Doors open at 7 o'clock, bell time at 8 o'clock. World Wrestling Empire, be there. We'd like to get to know you. Yes, we would. Call 274-9930 and answer a few questions, and we'll send you free passes to a future WWE Live event. That's 274-9930. Operators are standing by. All right, Ledge here with the World Wrestling Empire heavyweight champion, Red Eagle. Finally caught up to him, got in the shower, you know, just finished up a match with, great, with a, a great wrestler, I guess, Raging Cajun. The Raging Cajun. What a joke. I am the WWE heavyweight champion, and I regained my title, and I am going to hang on to this title till water or whatever comes my way. All my people have been warriors for years, and I will no exception. I am a great warrior, Ledge. All right, any comments on uh, your match with Bolo next week? I'll tell you what, that Guatemalan better go home and eat some whatever that big man eats because he's going to need something against the champion in the WWE. That's, that's for sure, Bolo. All right, now back to some more action. Okay, Red Eagle just a little bit upset there about what happened with uh, Raymond and Renegade, don't you think? I'll tell you, Raymond and Renegade always tries a bunch of this here backstabbing. Well, they always try to get you from the back, and I never could understand what they're trying to accomplish by doing such tactics. You know, you'd think they would have learned what that gets you by the recent events that have transpired in the World Wrestling Empire, and, and I'm referring to a certain individual's permanent ban from wrestling on the account of the tactics used by that individual. I guarantee you, you think they would follow. They would follow by the example that had been sent for them. You really would. You think but of course, so? this is Raymond. Yeah, you know, look at who we're talking about. Well, speaking of talking about things, you know, the Masters of Destruction have uh, had it in for Shane Cortez for quite a while. And since uh, Cortez doesn't get the chance to uh, tag team very often because he's generally defending his television title, um, Mayhem decided he wanted a shot at him on his own. So he's going to get his opportunity. Well, I guarantee this is going to be a good match. Shane Cortez is one of the better wrestlers here in the WWE, and he's a high flyer, and I do like myself, high flying action. All right, well, let's go to Christy in the ring. Coming to the ring first, standing 5 feet, 11 inches tall, he weighs in at 270 pounds, mayhem. Mayhem, 
one half of the Masters of Destruction. I tell you though, Ledge, this is the same way as before. Without his other partner, he's useless. That's right. Okay, well, I'll tell you, for his opponent, let's go to Christy in the ring. And now, approaching the ring, his opponent, standing six feet, one inch tall, weighing 215 pounds, from Henrietta, Oklahoma, the World Wrestling Empire Television Champion, the high-flying Shane Cortez. A mighty fine man just walked in the room right now, a Mr. Shane Cortez, one of the best wrestlers that you'll see here in the WWE. All right, a little Christmas spirit going on there with Shane Cortez, kind of hold over from the holidays. These guys, Cortez, one of the fine champions in the world of wrestling empire, does a great job on all occasions. Look forward to an awesome match right here. Well, i tell you what, Ledge, Cortez has been working a lot out in the gym. He's putting on a few extra pounds there, sure enough, and really looking good. A fine young athlete right here. All right, referee Alan Lane, third man in the ring for this match. Shane Cortez dressed in all black tonight. Kind of a new attire for Mr. Cortez. Waiting for invitation. All right, and there's the bell. Both the wrestlers uh, taking a little time to get the crowd kind of fired up here tonight. Yeah, don't look like his other half here is liking this here at all. He sure does. Matter of fact, I think he's going to leave. Uh, Mayhem rolls out underneath the bottom rope. Uh, obviously upset about something. <laughs> you don't suppose he'd up and give him a forfeit and make it an easy one. Uh, you know, just never know what these guys are capable of, singly or when they're together. Mayhem getting the opportunity to take a shot at Shane Cortez, the World Wrestling Empire television champion. Oh, oh look at there. Hey. Cortez uh, goes in with that goose you've been well, looking for there. Crazy Carl's move. <laughs> they must be practicing together or something. Huh? <laughs> Maybe they're working out together, just never has told us. There you go. There you go. All right, down to the down to business now. Collar and elbow tie up. Oh, oh! Both wrestlers working early on the wrist lock. Cortez in with the arm bar. Well, I tell you, both these wrestlers have plenty of ring savvy. This is really going to be an excellent match. Shane Cortez goes for the early pin. Nice roll up. Mayhem manages to escape. Shane Cortez been warned about pulling the tights. Uh, claims he didn't, and I think the crowd agrees with him right there. Ooh, tried to whip, and Cortez blocked it. Shane Cortez uh, working hard, uh, developing physically a lot in recent months. Uh, oh! Nice Ooh. high cross body by Shane Cortez. If you also notice, he grabbed the head to be sure and drag, drive the back of the skull into the mat right there with all of his weight right on top of it. That had to put a knot on the old head. Puts him out right then and there. Truthfully, I'm surprised that he had got up. All right, Shane Cortez has a mayhem on the mat, goes to work on the arm bar. Mayhem manages to get those legs into the rope, and referee Alan Lane orders the hold broken. I guarantee you, just like his partner, they both know where they're at in the ring at all times. Now, that is good wrestling. All right. Referee Alan Lane checks over Mayhem, says, boys, let's continue this one, and there's the collar and elbow tie. Oh! Good shot. Good shot. Quick move by Cortez. Probably one of Shane Cortez. Whoa, right in the man. back of the head as the man was getting up. Ouch. That had to hurt. Ouch. I guarantee, let's see if he can get back up. There he goes. Well, I'm awful Able. amazed. Cortez quickly moves back in, trying to put his opponent away. Big clothesline. This could be all. This could be all right here. Shane Cortez controlling this match with his quickness tonight. Good job. Go. Overhead wrist lock, trying for the hair. Cortez then moves. Cortez doesn't have a whole lot of hair on the front of that head to pull on, does he? That's true. If you're going to grab the hair, you need to grab it from the back there. All right, now he's torquing it down hard on Mayhem, who is uh, having a lot of problems at the hands of the high-flying Shane Cortez. Good reverse there. Good reverse there by Mayhem. Mayhem torquing and hard Mayhem now. Needs to take him down to the mat. Ouch. The only way you can get Cortez is to take him down to the mat and lay on. 
Leon and Shane Cortez outweighed just slightly in this match. And Mayhem would be doing good to uh, try to use a little of that weight to his advantage. Yeah, but listen to that crowd. Listen to that crowd. They're all behind Cortez. Oh, there you go. Oh, nice move. One, two. Whoa, I thought that was it. Got a kick out on two and a half on that one. Crowd all behind Shane Cortez. From the fine fans that visit the World Wrestling Empire here at the Oklahoma National Guard Armory. You know, you, you just got to get out to these live events. Well, I guarantee you, if you ain't coming out to a live one, you're missing. You know, and the good part is, is it is cheap family entertainment. You can get a whole family into this right. thing for less than 20 bucks. That's right. Cheaper than going to the show and all the above. That's exactly right. Meanwhile, in the ring, Mayhem tries to choke a little of the life out of Shane oh. Cortez. Get him off that throw. Using a little bit of that rank savvy again. Staying on to the throw there to take the win out of Shane Cortez. You can't be a high flyer if you can't get the win to do it. That's exactly again, right. right on the throw there. I bet he goes back right here again. One, two, oh, kick out on two by Shane Cortez. Mayhem. Mayhem more concerned about how fast the referee is counting than he is of uh, following up that move. Well, I guarantee you, the speed of that count really counts there sometimes, Ledge. Sometimes it doesn't go as fast as you want it to, I guarantee you. Oh, referee Alan Lane right in on the action. Mayhem able to control the head, and that's the direction of Shane Cortez. Oh, two times, two times. Big chops, oh, Cortez reverses it. Wow! Sets him up again, boom! A couple of punishing blows by Shane Cortez, whip into the turnbuckle, oh! There it is, there it is. How can that man stand on, there he goes. Mayhem is on down, there, Cortez in for the oh, cover. Two. Oh, got it. Man, that's a little stamina right there when you can get that shoulder up after a, what just happened to Mayhem? Oh, and now he reverses the whip. Oh, the sunset flip, one, two. Mayhem. What was that, was that a two count? Two count, almost a three count. Oh! Here's that good drop kick. Big in, big in. Okay, Shane, now let's finish him off now. You got him down, let's finish Shane him off. Shane Cortez, we've seen this lots of times. Heads for that top rope. Don't spend too much time up there. Shane Cortez, the high-flying Shane Cortez right here. Oh, the flying one. Excellent move by Shane Cortez. You know, I bet he was 10, 15 feet near there, Ledge. And almost into the lights that time, Shane Cortez. What a man. I don't think he knew what hit him. I sure don't. Okay, well, I'll tell you, we're not even going to take a commercial break right here because we got another great match coming at you. We're going to see um, uh, the return of Eric Awesome as uh, his new tag team partner, and he's going to be ch challenging Annihilator and a newcomer to the Empire called Cannonball. Well, this ought to be the match to watch here, Ledge. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. I can't wait for him to get it on. All right, well, I'll tell you, let's not talk any more about it. Let's just go to Christy in the ring. And now for some tag team action with a combined total weight of 562 pounds, the Annihilator and Cannonball. Annihilator comes to the World Wrestling Empire, decides to do a little tag team action, recruits a new partner, an additional member to the Bad Boys. Well, I'll tell you, who is this Cannonball character anyway? I've never seen him before. All I know about this guy is that he's Annihilator's new tag team partner. I know absolutely nothing else. Silverado building quite the stable there with the bad boys. Their opponents with a combined total weight of 478 pounds, Hot Property. All right, Hot Property, Eric Awesome, and the Heart Taker, Danny Dane. I 
guarantee you, Ledge, it's, it's good to see these guys back with the WWE. I missed them while they was gone, and I'm glad they're back off their little tour right there and can return to give us yeah. some more good matches here in the WWE. Eric, awesome. I understand these two guys are brothers, actually. Yeah, you bet. They are brothers. And uh, sometimes they get a little bit of brotherly conflicts between them. Yeah, that's not any kind of a surprise at this point. You know, Annihilator looks like he's just getting bigger and bigger to me. It's got to have something to do with that beer and peanut butter diet Silverado's got him on. <laughs> I tell you, Ledge, he does not like it when you say that. You know, and, and you know, I just don't understand it. Silverado calls it a high-protein and carbohydrate diet, but I know for a fact it's beer and peanut butter. Well, I guarantee you, you can see the carbohydrates right around his stomach line there for sure. <laughs> It's a growing and a growing, a wonderful, wonderful, as a fine gentleman once said. Annihilator, Cannonball taking on Heart Taker, Danny Dane, and Eric Awesome here in the World Wrestling Empire. I tell you, Ledge, I think this Cannonball character is actually taller than Annihilator. All right, there's the bell. Cannonball starts out against the Heart Taker, Danny Dane. Collar and elbow tight. Oh, nice move into a hammerlock. Danny Dane reverses it. And I think potentially this cannonball guy could be as big as Annihilator. That guy has got some height on him. Boy, he sure threw him up high in the air right there. Big Coming move. back in, another one. Look at that. He's going to try it. Oh, there we go. Oh, good move. Got him a double drop kick. Put him down. Hey, here comes Annihilator. Annihilator comes in. Eric Awesome and Danny Dane are ready to take care of that. There's a whip into the ropes. Almost got him in the ropes. That would have been painful if he would have been about, oh, another foot. There it is, double, another drop, double kick. drop kick. Annihilator, not the legal man in the ring, as is Eric Awesome. The heartbreaker, Danny Dane, still the legal man in the ring for hot property. I know why they call Cannonball Cannonball, because he shot out of that ring like a cannonball. That's a fact. All right. Heart taker Danny Dane, Eric Awesome, the tag team of Hot Property. Working against Annihilator and Cannonball. There's a tag, Annihilator is into the ring and uh, he says he wants uh, Eric Awesome. I don't think Annihilator is a happy camper at all. Not right now. There's a tag and Eric Awesome says he's not afraid of anything. Eric Awesome, I guarantee you, is a fantastic athlete. He also is one of the better wrestlers we got in the WWE, and he has a good chance of taking Annihilator. All right, these guys are going to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and argue here for a little while. Annihilator says, let's go. Oh! Oh, there's a little bit of speed. Eric using awesome. his speed over the size of Annihilator. Again, around and back through. I bet Annihilator is really getting hot now. All right. A couple of quick moves by Eric Awesome. We'll begin to see a little frustration on the face of Annihilator at some point. Collar and elbow tie-up. There's a whip off the ropes. Oh, Eric Awesome slides underneath the giant Annihilator. Oh, mercy. Annihilator is one of the biggest complained babies I've ever heard in my whole life, I swear. I think we ought to get him a towel so he can cry on it. Oh, isn't that nice of you? Annihilator scoping out and sizing up Eric Awesome. Trying to uh, figure out a... It's sometimes now we go to the timeout. Here we go. Annihilator needs a timeout. Well, I tell you, Ledge, all that timeout is, all that timeout is right there is just to stall a little bit of time so he can think of what he's going to try next. That's right. And uh, as we all know, Annihilator needs all the time to think that we can possibly get him. I guarantee you. <laughs> I guarantee you. I'm thinking about that beer and peanut butter for sure. <laughs> All right, being warned by the referee now, and I later just can't get it. Go! Double axe handle to the back. I guarantee you, I've took them from the Annihilator, and they take everything out of it. He is a powerful, powerful, strong. There you go. Now, that, that might have been it, Lynch. That might be it right there. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see a three pin. Whoa, look oh, at that. You know, Annihilator probably could have got the pin if he hadn't been going with the lazy cover. 
Yeah, if he would have been down on top of him, I believe this match would have been over right then. Hit Annihilator and Cannonball would be the victors. Actually, really couldn't even call that a lazy cover. Goes in, body slam. Woo, that wasn't even a body slam. That was a body throw there, Ledge. I guarantee you, Annihilator picked him up over his shoulder and then throwed him right out to the center of the ring so he could sit up there and kick on his head just a few times. Oh, Annihilator now going to the punishing style of wrestling that he is uh, becoming world famous for. And in fact, Annihilator is so confident uh -oh, in his he him in mid -air. Boom! Down he goes. Drove him to the floor, through the mat. Eric Austin awesome looks out. Oh, I am amazed at Eric Austin's stamina to get up and something like that. Annihilator isn't too happy, though, with the count. Eric Awesome in a lot of trouble right now at the hands of the Annihilator. Annihilator puts him into the ropes. Oh, goes in for the chair. Silverado moves in for the guillotine. Eric Awesome in a lot of trouble right here at the hands of the Annihilator. I'm surprised Cannonball ain't got over there so he can have his fun with uh, Awesome too. Working on one half a hot property. There's the tag. Yeah, they've been staying on the hamstring and they're going to stay in the same spot. Two big men into the ring. Oh! Double fist, double fist, right side, each side of the chest right there. Eric Awesome is really taking a beating at this point. He needs to get to his tag team partner and get him get out of the ring. Cannonball sets him up. No! Oh. He He's he, reverse it. Come on, Awesome. Reverse it. Nice block. Reverse Blocks it, it again. Reverse it. Take him over. No! Oh, Damn suplex. Oh, there you go. That's man. one of my favorite moves. Incredible amount of strength by Eric Awesome using the standing suplex. Cannonball. I Eric Awesome. We can actually get a double count out here. Oh, Cannonball makes the tag. And here comes Annihilator against the heart taker, Danny Dane. Annihilator trying to call timeout again. Oh! There you go, Danny Dane taking it to the big man, two. He's gonna take him in, gonna take him in the corner. No, he stopped him, he blocked, pulled around. Oh, there you go, double arms right into the face of Annihilator. We know from past experience about how much force it takes to get Annihilator off his feet, and that was a, 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 a just, I can't even get words for that. It took a lot of effort to get Annihilator on the mat Good with that. Double forearm, all body weight behind it. Good move by the heart taker, Danny Dane. His hot property is in the ring against Annihilator and Cannonball. Newest acquisition to a Silverado's Bad Boys gang. You know, I'm surprised they didn't take Silverado out with uh, you know who. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, there was a lot of discussion concerning really just cleaning house, but uh, from my understanding, it was felt like that uh, these guys that had, had been here for a long time and that uh, uh, were more influenced by the addition of Akbar to the Empire, and uh, I guess basically they were grandfathered back into the Empire after the expulsion of uh, Devastation Incorporated. Well, I tell you, Akbar was awful lucky that they took him out and not the outlaws. And if we ever see that man on the street again, that's it for him. We're going to take him out our own time. The big kiss goodbye. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the ring. Got that bear hug. Got that bear hug. Look at him. The whole upper part of his body is turning blood red. Cutting oh. off the oxygen and the blood to the upper torso of Eric Awesome. Annihilator going with the bear hug. Eric Awesome trying to apply some pressure. Oh! Good move, smart move by Eric Austin. It shows Austin has quite a bit of ring savvy in there himself. That's about the only way to break that hold when a man his size has a hold of you. You'll do anything to get the air, anything to get out of that predicament. Eric Austin's going after Cannonball down at the side of the ring. Meanwhile, in the ring, Annihilator reverses the whip, sets up oh, the heart taker, Danny Dang. Tried to do a flying body block right there. Sure enough. Oh, oh look at there. That, this could be it. This Eric could Austin, be it. What? Yeah, that's it. All right, there you have it. Hot property, the tag team of Eric Awesome and Danny Dane defeat Annihilator and Cannonball. Woo! Oh, man, what a match!
I wonder if that hurt his back doing that double drop kick right off the top rope, you know. That had to be some tremendous force flying right into between the shoulder blades there to take the big man down. Whoa, I tell you, man, whoa. I tell you, what else can you say? Hey, let's get a word in from our sponsors because they got plenty to say. And we're going to be right back. This is The Ledge with the Bone Crusher, Bobby Burns, and you're watching the World Wrestling Empire. You better fight me for more wrestling. Conley's is expanding. No, not Jimmy, the showroom. To make more room for all your appliance needs. We've expanded our lines of new furniture with Washington Dykes and Seville. And as always, we have a full line of quality pre-owned appliances. So whether you need a refrigerator, stove, washer, dryer, TV, or VCR, come to Conley Appliances and either purchase or rent to own. And don't forget our service after the sale. Come by Conley's on the corner of 49th West Avenue and Charles Page Boulevard and see our expanded showroom. And remember, Vern Jewelry is still next door. Hey, all you viewers have never attended a WWE live event. What are you waiting for? Come on out to our next event, January 13th, 1996, at the National Guard Armory, 4200 North Mingo Valley Expressway. We have lighted parking, clean premises, family orientation, no alcoholic beverages or smoking allowed. Lots of good, clean fun for a nominal price. Where else can you kids go and spend an entire evening for only two bucks? And senior citizens are two bucks also. Regular tickets, only five bucks. So come out January 13th and see Red Eagle defend his title against the original Renegade. You'll have a good time. Honest. Promotional consideration provided by the following. Connolly Appliances, home of service after the sale. Radio City CB, the place for CBs and accessories. Dolphin Manufacturing, proud builders of the World Wrestling Empire set. DJ's, 4405 South Peoria, Tulsa's smallest store. Break one nine for a lonely trucker. Can anyone copy? How about you? Guys, where do you go when you How just got to get on that channel? Algorithm. Try Radio City CB. Radio City has Where's new Grant, Unit, and Galaxy and Cobra radios, Fire Stick and Hustler antennas, and they're an authorized Wilson dealer. Mama got you on a budget? Radio City has a large selection of pre-owned radios for anyone's pocketbook. Whether it's installation, service, or just the rock-bottom prices, the next time you just got to get through, think Radio City CB. In the northwest corner of the parking lot, Bruce's Hello? Truck Stop, 161st and Skelly Drive. Out there. We'd like to get to know you. Yes, we would. Call 274-9930 and answer a few questions, and we'll send you free passes to a future WWE live event. That's 274-9930. Operators are standing by. Welcome back to the World Wrestling Empire, where, man, we have had an awesome, awesome Fantastic. night of wrestling action. You know, and believe it or not, it was a fairly clean night. How'd that happen, I wonder? Uh, it, it amazes me. It uh, <laughs> really does. With some of the scoundrels we had out there, I guarantee you, I was surprised to see the wrestling as actually clean as it was. Hey, a good night in the Empire. Of course, we saw Leopard Man and Ian St. James. Leopard Man manages to uh, cover Ian St. James in that match. Well, I tell you, Leopard Man pulled everything he had, everything he had to take on the newcomer, Ian St. James. I look for that young man, St. James, I look for that young man to come up to the top here within the next few years in the WWE. All right, and then another match with lots of great action when Chaos took on Crazy Carl. Crazy Carl goes up on that one with a pinfall. Well, I tell you, I wasn't surprised at all at that ledge. That was uh, something I really expected to happen, and it did, just as I said. But Crazy Carl, I tell you, he is a character and uh, a good person and quite a good wrestler, and I was not surprised at all to see him overcome the likes of Chaos. And then, of course, speaking of not surprised, we had Red Eagle uh, pins the Raging Cajun. Of course, now Red Eagle was a little upset over what uh, Raymond and Renegade tried to pull at the end of that match. I tell you. Uh, Raymond and Renegade absolutely should not have been out there, period. That was crazy. It was cheap. And I tell you, they ought to, well, Raymond ought to be walking down the road carrying his suitcase yeah. with his group with him. In light of the fact of everybody that got kicked out of the Empire over the you-know-who deal. And, of course, then we saw Shane Cortez once again, a defined champion, a great win, goes over against Mayhem. Well, I tell you, Shane Cortez is a fine athlete. He's strong. He's got plenty of agility. He can flat get down to wrestling. And when he went over, I wasn't surprised at all about that either. Okay, and then you saw the return of Eric Awesome with his new tag team partner, the heart taker, Danny Dane, his brother. Tag team of Hot Property defeats Annihilator and Cannonball. Annihilator is... 
what's the word, ticked off? <laughs> uh, annihilator stay is uh, ticked off there, I guarantee you. I think it's from drinking too much beer and eating too much of that daggum peanut butter that everybody seems to point a finger at and say there. Kind of, uh, kind of stops you up a little uh, bit. It kind of shows, you know. <laughs> but uh, I guarantee you, them two brothers, they are good wrestlers. They have savvy. They have what it takes to make it in the WWE. That's right. I tell you, it's been a great night. Now, listen, if you want to write to the World Wrestling Empire, write to P.O. Box 593 Owasso, Oklahoma, 74055. Hey, get ready to order Blood Baths and Battles in the World Wrestling Empire. It's going to be a great tape. Hey, I guarantee you, I know that uh, Texas Outlaws is in that, Shane Cortez is in that, and some of the other finer wrestlers right here of the WWE. Be sure to order that tape. It won't let you down one bit. All right. Bye-bye, Kayla. We'll see you next week right here on the World Wrestling Empire. Well, that's fun. The chance to speak to people whose expertise and experience about Israel is one.